Hi everybody. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to draw a penguin today. I have it already laid out and my penguin just needs to be sharpie. I'm gonna kind of show you step by step. I have my eraser, so if I make any oopses, I have that. I have my sharpie and I have colored pencils. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the eyes today. So I want to determine what kind of eyes I have. I'm going to have kind of more normal eyes. So I'm doing a circle and a circle. And then I'll, I'll shade this part in black. Just a little bit of wiggle. So start with the eyes today. Sometimes I start with a, a, the basic shape, but today it center around the cute little eyes. So I get my other eye, I do a circle another circle and then I shade it in and the camera is jiggling because of my shading get that all shaded in make sure I have no white spots and my eyebrows because I want eyebrows on this particular one next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the uh, beak so I do a curve line in another curve line in and then I'm gonna do the letter V so I have my letter V and since I made a little bit of oops over that edge, just kind of clean it up a little bit so it looks nice. Two small curved lines for the nostrils. Next, I'm going to do the letter M around the eyes. So I do the letter M around the eyes. Next, I'm going to do a half circle all the way around. Almost a, almost a circle. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the scarf. So it's a scarf has kind of a curved line on this side, curved line on this side, and I slightly swoop it in to get a curved line. Slight ones, more of a horizontal curve. And now I'm going to do curved lines. Now these curved lines go this way, and then all of a sudden I swoop which directions with the curved lines just makes it a little bit more interesting. Now see how I have these little extra oopses over on the edges where I went? Just kind of clean that up a little bit. Now for my bottom part of my scarf, do a rectangle type shape but curve. Almost triangle rectangle shape. I do these horizontal lines because I did vertical lines in the scarf. Two horizontal lines here. So with that, the different kind of pattern that I have, um, I just switch directions and it gives it interest. Now ex ne uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is another half circle, kind of a curve line. I really missed on my line, that's okay though. I have my eraser and I drew lightly to make sure. Now I'm just doing a couple curve lines. They almost look like fish scales. Lower the letter U. So I have that, and those kind of represent his feathers. Next, what I'm gonna do is another curve line. We use a lot of curve lines in this penguin. All right, so I have another curve line. And again, it's kind of like the letter C, but then I go the opposite direction. I want to dry, draw parallel curve lines, parallel, Parallel, and then a zigzag line for the fluffy part of the ear muffs. So I get those zigzag lines, and I just add those in. Just kind of gives it a little bit of nice look. Now for the first wing, I'm going to do a curve line, and I'm going to connect it here to this spot. Do another curve line, and get it connected to the body. And then I want to do the same on the other side. Curve line, curve line. Now I'm going to imagine approximately about the third of the paper. So I divide my paper into three sections. One third, one third, one third. And I'm going to draw a wavy horizontal line. I'm going to imagine this penguin's on the ice. So just do that. And I'm going to add the feet which all I'm doing is I'm gonna give this particular penguin three toes. Adding the three toes to it, voila. 
Next, I'm going to add my snowflakes for the background. Now, these aren't too fancy. It's letter T, letter X, letter T, letter X, letter T, letter X. Just a very simple type of snowflake to represent a snowflake. Snowflakes are all kinds of differences, and that's okay to have. So if yours are a little short or a little long, you got it. It's okay. Now this one's going off the page to give it a dramatic effect. When your designs touch the edges of your paper, what's happening is you're creating some drama. Sometimes drama is good in art. What I'm also doing is I'm creating triangles, visual triangles, so that my eye moves around the page. By having those triangles set, I create interest, and I want that way people will look at my art. Put my signature on there. Now what I'm going to do for craftsmanship is because I made those little oopses, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take my eraser. I'm just going to erase any extra pencil lines prior to doing any color pencil work. So if I have any oopses, now if I'm more careful, I'll have less erasing to do. So if you take your time and go slow, then you'll have less work. I usually have a lot of erasing to do. And that's okay. That's why I draw really light. So that way, if I do make a mistake, all I really need to do is just take my eraser and fix it. Or problem solve if something's not quite right. And I can go back and change it by adding to it, kind of figuring out what I should do. All right, so I'm going to get those extra pencil lines off. Extra eraser marks off. Get that all set. So that took us about seven minutes, not too terribly long. What takes a while is the adding of the color pencils. Now, because this particular picture is on ice and it's snowy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blue for my background. I'm just going to create very, very lightly. And I'm holding my pencil way up here at the top. I'm doing that because I don't want to put a lot of pressure. When I want to press hard, I move it. But when I just want to do it really light, I have it way up here. And then I'm also holding my paper so that it doesn't move. And all I'm doing is just very lightly adding blue very lightly. I just want to give the illusion of the sky. I don't necessarily want to color it a dark blue today. I'm going to, for this particular picture, just have the dark, the light blue, and then take my snowflakes, make them dark. Now I'll speed up, but I'll slow down on the inside. Just going back and forth. Now, if I switch directions, you're going to see that in my coloring. Now, you're seeing all those little extra lines because I switched directions. I do want to match the pressure that I placed on the outside of my penguin with the kind of the inside underneath there. So that way, it stays consistent and uniform. And it looks nice that way, too. So... Just getting that all shaded in. All right, so now I have my sky colored in. Let me bring that a little bit closer so you can see. Yep, at the sky. <laughs> it's just very light. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my ice. Super light, not a lot of pressure. I am going to give a little bit more pressure under the toes to give the illusion that there is a shadow hanging out. Nothing too terribly fancy. I just want this guy to be fun. Just something fun to do. Now he is, I can make him any color I want. Penguins, 
you know, you're typically, you have the black side when you think of the penguin, and then you've got the white tummies or the yellow tummies, depending on what kind of penguin you have. But if you want your penguin to be rainbow or purple or green, go ahead and make it any color you want. You have the basic shape. So feel free to add color to how you would like it to fit your, either for your color, your personality, uh, your viewpoints, just kind of have fun with it. That's what I like to do. So I'm just adding black for my penguin. Now if my daughter was coloring it, she'd probably pick purple. And then if my youngest was coloring it, we would definitely have a pink penguin because she really likes pink. And my son might actually do blue. So it's just kind of whatever color is up to you. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in the beak. A little bit of yellow on the tummy. Not too terribly much, but just a light pressure. And let's see here, I want green earmuffs. I always start with a very light then we're gonna have green fluff, just very light, because then I can go back and I can add the darker values. So I'm gonna start off really light. It's a lot easier to add more than it is to take away. Now the scarf, I'm liking this color, just to give a little contrast to the green. I'm gonna do a pattern. So we'll do that one, I'm gonna pick this one, now, if you wanted snowflakes for your pattern instead of these stripes, you could do that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of color in the cheeks just to kind of give it a slight illusion. I'm not pressing very hard right now. Um, I think I'm going to do blue. And I am coloring in a different direction. Now the saturation level of the molecules, there's a lot of space in between, so it's not very high. The moment I press harder, now notice how we switched, I went from here to here. When I did that, it got darker. So as you're adding your designs, add some value to it. Value is so nice. Value is a lot of fun. Go back. I move my fingers so that, or how that my grip, how I'm holding it. Now I'm kind of doing the same consistency of the value pressing darker and then getting lighter. And then I want to add a little bit darker in the green. So I'm going to press a little bit harder just to give it that idea. Kind of give it around the sides. Do a little bit more on this side to match the other side. Add a little bit at the top. It really pops it out when you start to add your value. It also increases your craftsmanship. So as you're creating your art, think about what kind of value you want to put into it. Are you using dark, light, the grays, the in-betweens? When you start adding value, you get form. Form is a 3D shape and value is the use of light and dark. So adding lots of value, putting it nice and dark and getting lighter and lighter. And that just really brings out my penguin. Spending that little extra time, really kind of, I'm gonna add a little bit extra here, and a little bit of shadow in the feathers do that for each one. Now when you're doing your drawings, you can spend as much time or as little as you want. Whatever amount you invest into your art is up to you. 
I like to invest a lot of time in my art. Now, sometimes my fun little drawings are just that. They're just fun, like this guy. He's nothing serious, but he does bring a whole lot of joy, and he is fun. I like him. I'm going to add another one over on this side, even though my shadows are not matching. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely not consistent. So if I were to use a consistent light source, they would match this guy. Not matching so much. This is just kind of fun, more um, artistic, just kind of throwing it out there. I'm just having fun. That's kind of what the purpose of art is, just to enrich our lives and have fun with it. Oh, nope, I don't want green in his feathers. Whoosh, that was almost close. Now, I noticed I didn't bring in orange, but I want orange feet. So I'm just going to take this color I used from the scarf, and then I'm just going to add a yellow to it. So it's kind of mixing. And I'm just going to layer it. It's going to turn slightly orange. And you're like, whoa, that's really cool. What other possible combinations are out there? Lots and lots, actually. What's nice about colored pencils is you can layer them on top of each other. So I like to layer my colored pencils when I'm using them. That's what's neat about this feature with colored pencils is the fact that you can layer colors and blend colors. You can also do the same thing with crayons. contour this. Contour is the outline of something. It's a line that doesn't touch. So we did a lot of contour today when we did the outline of our penguin cartoons. Use this technique a lot. It's just having that sharp line. It gives it a very cartoon feel to it. And that's okay. Cartoons are fun. So I have my cartoon penguin. Now I can add a little bit of blue in the shadows. I like to add a little bit of blue. To throw that in there just a little bit. Add a little bit of blue up in here. In the ear moss. Give it a blue tint. All right, I think I want to make these a little bit darker. Add a little bit more pressure. Put some more molecules in there so you have a higher saturation level. Just kind of fun. All 